Hey, Ryzen here. Creating a drag and drop Kanban board can seem like a daunting task, but with the right tools and a bit of guidance, it becomes much more manageable. Today, I'll walk you through how to build a Kanban board using the DND Kit library, one of the most flexible and powerful drag and drop libraries for React. We'll be referencing the Tasks board from Increaser, a productivity toolkit. While the Increaser source code is private, all the reusable components you need are available in the Ryzen Kit repository, which I've linked in the description. Whether you're looking to build a simple task board or a more complex system, this guide will give you the foundation to get started quickly. The task board component is the heart of our Kanban style task management system. It handles task grouping, drag and drop functionality, and updating tasks order and status. Let me walk you through how it works. The task board component receives a list of tasks via the items prop, but to display them effectively on our board, we need to organize them by status. This is where the group tasks utility function comes into play. It groups tasks based on their status, creating an array of groups where each group contains tasks with the same status. The toEntries function acts like object.entries except it returns an entry object with a key and value property. This is useful for working with records in a more type-safe way. To guarantee that every status is represented in the groups, we use the makeRecordUtility function. This function creates an object where each status serves as a key and the value is initialized as an empty array. This ensures that even if a particular status doesn't have any tasks, its column will still be rendered on the board. Next, we merge the empty groups created by the makeRecord function with the actual task groups generated by the group items utility function. The group items function takes an array of items and a function get key that extracts the grouping key from each item. It returns a record object where each key corresponds to a group, and the value is an array of items for that group. By combining these two utilities, we ensure that the task board not only contains the actual task group by their status, but also displays all possible status columns, even if they have no tasks yet. To ensure the tasks within each group are displayed in the correct sequence, we use the sort entities with order utility function. This function takes an array of entities that have an order property and sort them in an ascending order based on that property. This ensures that tasks appear in the intended order within each status column. Once the tasks are grouped, we can proceed with rendering them on the board. To manage the task that is currently being opened in a motel or edited, we wrap everything inside the active item ID provider. This provider stores the ID of the task being edited. To quickly set up this state, we leverage the getStateProvider setup utility from RisingKit, which I've linked in the description. Next, the active task component checks if there is an active item ID. If a task is currently being edited, the component will render the edit task form overlay with the relevant task data. The edit task form overlay allows the user to modify or delete the task. When the user finishes editing or deletes the task, the onFinished callback is triggered, which set the active item ID to null, effectively closing the model. By using the current task provider, we avoid the need to pass task data down through multiple levels of components. Instead, we can access the current task directly within any child component using the useCurrentTask hook. This is made possible by leveraging the getValueProvider setup utility from RisingKit, which only stores a value without allowing it to be modified by child components. To position the columns on the board, we use the task board container, which is composed of two style components, wrapper and container. The wrapper component ensures that the board occupies the full available space, while the container component arranges the columns in a horizontal stack. Additionally, the take whole space absolutely utility function is used to guarantee that the container fully occupies the space within the wrapper, providing a fluid and responsive layout for the task columns. To maintain UI consistency, we store configuration settings such as padding and spacing in a task board config object. By centralizing these values, we ensure that elements like column spacing and item padding 
a consistent across the taskboard even if they used in multiple places. Previously we were using React Beautiful DD, but it came with several critical limitations and is no longer maintained. Fortunately, we had an abstraction layer in place which provided a more comfortable API for managing drag and drop UI. This made switching to DND kit much easier since we only had to update the implementation of the DND groups component. The same DND groups component is also utilized in the schedule section of the task page where tasks are displayed in the vertical lists group by date. Additionally, we use the DND list component for simpler list based drag and drop interfaces. Hence, this abstraction layer significantly reduces the complexity of switching libraries, allowing us to maintain consistency across different parts of the app with minimal effort. Our DND group component doesn't include any built in styling. Instead, all the rendering logic is delegated to the render items and render groups functions, which are passed as props. This gives us the flexibility to fully customize the appearance of the groups and items based on the specific requirements of each use case. By decoupling the logic from the presentation, we can reuse the same component in different contexts, tailoring the UI as needed without modifying the core functionality. Now let's go over each property of the DND groups component in detail. The groups property is an array of groups, where each group is represented by an entry with a key and an array of items. The component is generic, allowing you to define the types for the group key and the item ID, ensuring type safety and flexibility. The getItemID function extracts the unique identifier for each item. This is essential for managing drag and drop operations since the library needs to track the item's movement based on its ID. The onChangeCallback function is triggered whenever an item is moved to a new group or position. This function receives two arguments, the item ID and the new location of the item, including the group and position. It allows you to handle state updates when an item position changes. The render group function is responsible for rendering the container for each group. It receives the group ID, additional props, and a boolean is dragging over that indicate whether an item is currently being dragged over this group. This provides the flexibility to adjust the UI based on the drag state. Finally, the render item function is responsible for rendering each individual item within a group. It receives the item itself along with draggable props, drag handle props, and the item status, which can be idle, placeholder, or overlay. This gives full control over how items are displayed and interacted with during drag and drop actions. We'll store the currently dragged item as an active drag object which contains the item ID, the initial location of the item, and the group's array. This allows us to track the movement of the item during the drag operation and update the state accordingly when the drag ends. Since we also want to allow users to click on an item without immediately triggering a drag operation, we adjust the activation constraint for the pointer sensor to a very small distance. This ensures that the drag operation only begins if the user moves the pointer slightly after clicking, preventing accidental drags when the actual intent was to interact with the item through a click. When the drag operation ends, we reset the active drag state and use the getDND groups item destination function to determine the final location of the dragged item. If the item was moved to a different group or position, we trigger the onChange callback with the updated item ID and its new location. The getDND groups item destination function determines the destination of a dragged item during a drag and drop operation. It takes an item as input and checks if the item has current data. If it does, the function retrieves the container ID representing the group and index representing the position within the group from the item sortable data. It then returns the item's new location as a DND group item location object. If no destination data is found, the function defaults to placing the item in the group identified by item ID at index 0. To check if two DND group item location objects are equal, we compare their group ID and index properties. If both properties match, the locations are considered equal. The handle drag over callback handles moving items between groups during a drag and drop operation. Here's how it works. First, it checks if the target is valid. 
If the item isn't being dragged over a valid target, the function exits. Then it gets the source and destination. The source is the original group and position of the item, and the destination is where the item is dragged to. This is determined using the getDnd group item source and getDnd group's item destination. It then skips unnecessary updates. If the item is still within the same group, the function exits. Next, it updates the groups, and the state is updated with the new group arrangement. The item is removed from the source group and added to the destination group. Lastly, it reorders the items and the destination group is sorted by item order using the get new order and order utilities. This ensures the item is moved between groups and properly ordered. The get new order function calculates the new order value for an item being moved in a list. It uses an array of existing order values and adjusts the position based on the source and destination indices. If the order's array is empty, it returns the default order. If the item is moved to the first position, it returns a value slightly less than the current first item by subtracting the order increment step. For items in the middle of the list, the function calculates whether the item is moving up or down, then selects the appropriate previous and next order values, returning the average between them to insert the item in the middle. If the item is moved to the end of the list, it returns a value slightly greater than the last item by adding the order increment step. This approach ensures that items are always placed in the correct order without needing to reindex the entire list. The getDnd group's item source function determines the original location, group, and position of an item before it is dragged. It takes an active item from the DnD kit drag context as input. It extracts the container ID representing the group ID and index the position within the group from the item's current data, and asserts that this data exists using the should be present utility. It then returns a DnD group item location object containing the group ID, which is the original group ID, and index the item's position in the group. This function is used to track where an item originated during a drag and drop operation, ensuring the application knows the initial position before the item is moved. This part of the code maps over the task groups and renders each group using the DnD group component. The key point here is that if an item is being dragged, the active drag groups are used instead of the regular groups. This ensures that the board reflects the real-time state of the groups during the drag operation. Why use it? When an item is being dragged, its original group might change temporarily. For example, the item is removed from its original group and is in transit. Using active drag groups allows the UI to reflect the updated state immediately, making sure the drag and drop interaction is seamless. Each group is rendered with a render group function, and the items within the group are displayed using DnD item. The status of each item is determined based on whether it is a currently dragged item, giving it either a placeholder or idle status for visual feedback during the drag operation. The DnD group component represents a droppable group in a drag and drop interface. It uses DnD kit's use droppable hook in the sortable context to enable drag and drop functionality for a list of items within the group. The use droppable hook is used to set up the group as a droppable area, with set node ref applied to ensure the droppable region is properly referenced. The over variable indicates if a dragged item is currently hovering over this group. The is dragging over flag is calculated using use memo. It checks if the dragged item is either directly over the group or its container. The sortable context wraps the group, providing a vertical list sorting strategy for the items. It manages the sorting behavior and item movement within the group. The drag overlay renders a visual representation of the dragged item. If active drag exists, it retrieves the item using get item with active drag ID and set its status to overlay. If no item is being dragged, the overlay is not rendered. This provides smooth feedback during the drag operation. Today, we explored how to build a flexible and efficient drag and drop Kanban board using DNT group component. We broke down the key part of the component, including how tasks are grouped, rendered, and move between columns while ensuring smooth interactions with the DnD kit library. 
The leveraging utility is like getting your order managing drug statuses with drug overlay and using customizable render functions for groups and items, you can create a robust drug and drop interface that adapts to various use cases. As this approach not only simplifies implementation, but also ensures a seamless user experience. That's all. If you like the video, please like and subscribe.